I'm Monica Mangan, and I believe that updating your home doesn't have to take a ton of time or money. I show people how to get Pinterest-worthy spaces that are just right for them. This doesn't even look like our house. Are you Whoa. kidding me? <laughs> give me one weekend, I'll give you five projects, and you'll have a completely transformed space by Monday. This weekend, I am in New Jersey helping out a couple with their master bedroom. And I don't know what it is, but master bedrooms are the number one most forgotten room. And they have lived in their home for nine years and have not done a thing to it. This couple describes their style as minimalist wannabes. Right now, they have a whole lot going on in their room and in their life, but they'd really like to simplify and make this just a very streamlined, tranquil place that they can get away at the end of the day. Go. So I like what you've done with the place. Yeah. I'm actually kind of surprised. You guys said you've been here nine years and haven't touched it at all. That's We've done right. stuff with just about every other part of our house except for this bedroom. It's literally the case with every master bedroom. Everybody puts it on the back burner. They're like, I can just close the door. But yeah. nine years is a long time to be closing the door. Right? Yes. Hey, I'm Bryce. And I'm Kim. We're here in Gloucester City, New Jersey. This bedroom is hungry for a makeover. We've had a little bit of damage. The outside has been taken care of, but sort of the cosmetic end on the inside okay. never been touched. This room hasn't seen a drop of paint. Um, some of the furniture I've had since high school. Wow. Organization in the closet is nil. We just been very busy. We have three kids. Mm -hmm. We spend so much time uh, in our lives giving to our family, giving to others, having a little haven just for us. It feels so necessary, you know? We both need workspaces at home. Okay. For me, I'd really like to have a standing desk is always an idea that I've loved to have something like that. Okay. So style-wise, you guys said that you describe yourself as minimalist wannabes, which yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, is yeah, kind of yeah. awesome. <laughs> I think everybody wishes they were a little bit more minimalist. Yeah. I can't turn you into a minimalist after I leave. That's all up to you, but I do want to kind of run with that theme yeah. design-wise throughout the weekend. So instead of layering a ton of stuff into the room, we're actually going to layer in a ton of texture into the room. So hopefully that all the style comes from kind of low profile things that aren't adding to the space and then it's your perfect backdrop to become minimalist. Great, great. <laughs> all right, well you guys aren't actually minimalist yet, so we have a good amount of stuff we need to take out of this bedroom. First thing we'll do is box everything up, get it all out of here, we'll have an empty space and start in the first project, okay? Great. Right. Grab Let's do it. something Sounds and good. Here's to minimalism. All right. I promised you once we emptied this room, we would get on to our first project. There's a little bit more prep we have to do though before we can get to that. We are actually gonna say goodbye to this carpet. Yes. <laughs> Good, I didn't think, I mean, some people are not thrilled to lose the carpet, but this looks like it's had a long, hard life. It so. sure has, purpose. yeah. So right. what's gonna happen next? What are, you gonna, what are we gonna do with the floor? Good question. <laughs> well, that depends what we find underneath the carpet. Okay. It does. We kind of have a plan A and a plan B. I'm really hoping that plan A works out, but if not, there's going to be a plan B. Hoping we'll for come plan up with a. one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Fair enough. We'll make up a plan B on the fly if need be, but I think plan A is going to work great. So I know that there's going to be hardwood under this carpet because of where we're located and the age of this home, but I don't know what condition it's going to be in, and that could be a total game changer. All right, guys, so this is a moment of truth, but this is going to determine whether we're going with plan A or whether we make up a plan B. <laughs> All right. All right, let's see what we got. Ooh. Hey. Oh, they are a mess though. No, they are awesome. No? That is plan okay. A right there. Awesome. That has plan A written all over it. So these are some crazy beat old floors. They sure are. But they're wood. And I can totally work with this. Okay. It's definitely gonna work. I talked about texture. Yeah. We got all the texture right here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So now we just gotta get all this padding up. I'll grab a trash bag, we'll get it out, and we need to also work on the tack strip along the edges. I really can't imagine what she might do with the floor because it's not in the greatest shape. She yeah. tells me that it's something that she can work with, <laughs> and I trust her, but at this point, I'm not so sure. All cleaned up? All cleaned up. Well, we're about to make a big old mess again. All right, I like it. <laughs> 
So now you can kind of see what we're dealing with here. How are you feeling about this? I'm, I don't feel convinced that we can get all of this off the floor. So the plan with this is that I wanna get all the orange paint up, all the spackle up. So we aren't getting it to like the original restored wood. We don't have time for that in a weekend, okay? So what we wanna do now is we have a pretty heavy duty grit on our sandpaper and we are just gonna get all the chunky stuff off of here. Okay. If we need a coarser grit, like a, like a, we have what, a 120 on right now? We have 120 and we have some 80s and, and 60s. Then 60s. So the lower number is is a heavier grit. It'll rip it up harder, but we're gonna start high and work our way down. So we don't wanna to go too aggressive to start with. All right, that took me about two seconds to realize that we needed a lower grit. So we're going with the 60. It's really gonna get the paint off. Team powwow here. How is it going for you guys? Is everything coming up? What's your situation? I can get the spackle stuff, but the orange paint is really difficult. Yeah, it's not moving, it's not budging. Mm -mm. So I'm gonna give you a couple options here, okay? My plan was to sand it all and then do a whitewash on your floor, which basically is watered down paint. But I actually think with the whole situation we have going on here, we should try and get all the spackle up and then without watering down the paint, paint the floors. Um, the other option would be to get like a big like drum sander and all this and that, but even then we don't really have enough time for that with everything else I have planned for this room. So how do you feel about white painted floors and then we can come back in distress spots if you even want to? I'm sure. down with that. Mm -hmm. Are we down with that? Yeah. Okay. Totally. So we, right now we would just get So we're going to focus up. more on the white spots. Basically okay. what we want to do now is it doesn't matter how it looks. It's going to matter how it feels. We want to get it pretty smooth. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So any of the chunks and stuff like that. Okay. So this is called designing on the fly <laughs> <laughs> and going, oh crap, plan A isn't going to work. So yes. this is like plan A. Five. Yeah. Eight and a half. <laughs> All right. The bummer is this paint is not coming up and that means I'm not gonna be able to do the whitewash treatment that I had in mind. But it's kind of just what you have to do when you deal with these old homes, just design on the fly. It's kind of my specialty. All right, so you and I are gonna work on a project in here and we're gonna focus just on this one wall right now, okay? We need to do it before we paint the floors because it's gonna take a little while to dry. Got it. All right, so I have a whole bunch of stuff here. I have trowels, I have joint compound, I have tinters, and what we're actually going to do is try and get the look of faux cement. Mm -hmm. So I wanna get the look of that without actually bringing cement in. So I thought joint compound, tinted gray, would look a heck of a lot like cement. Yo, all okay? right, all right. Now, I've never done this, and I don't know if anyone's ever done this, but I'm pretty confident that we can figure out a method that's gonna look awesome. What do you think Kim's gonna think? Yo, I think this is beyond what she even thought of, so I'm You excited. mean she didn't think faux concrete wall? <laughs> I don't think she was leaning that way, but I think she'll be impressed. Joint compound always makes me crave a peanut butter and fluff sandwich. Every single time, Yo, I'm like, oh, yes. we really need a fluff sandwich. Yes. So this is liquid cement color. It's basically a tinter for cement. We are gonna use the same product, but to tint our joint compound. It's very concentrated. A little will go a long way. That looks awesome. That's pretty great. So yeah, we have like a nice light gray color. So we're gonna tint this one differently because to get the look of concrete, we wanna have a major variance in the color. We're gonna put just barely any tinter in this one. I gave it a bit of a gray tint. Yeah, a little bit. The idea here is to use different shades of gray that we can blend together on the wall to get the look of concrete. So let's start getting some up on the wall, see which color we like on the wall, because right now we're just seeing it in the bucket and the blue color is kind of impacting it. And then we'll go from there. Usually when you're, you're working with joint compound, you don't want air bubbles, you don't want lines. We do, we want texture. So what do you think? I'm feeling it. I'm seeing where this is going. You're seeing it? 
Do you want more or less wall or? I mean, that's really up to you. Maybe we do some of these big kind of overarching strokes that you're doing, but then in some areas, just leave it plain and see when we mix in together, that's gonna look great. We're finding that starting with long vertical strokes of the darker shade, then coming over top of them with shorter strokes of the lighter shades is giving us the most concrete-like look. Remember, this is just our method. Yours could be totally different. This project is the epitome of perfectly imperfect. Just don't overthink it. What do you think? Wow, yeah. It's great texture. I love the color that, you know, it blended, not blended. I feel like it just took a little while and then we get into the group, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. I really like it. This is gonna take a while to dry, so Kim and I are gonna start working on the floor, so we'll clear out this stuff out of here. Beautiful. The room looks already really different, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. It doesn't even look like the same room. So now this is gonna really be a game changer. This is gonna clean and crisp up this space. And the number one thing to remember when painting a floor, and I've learned this from experience, is don't paint yourself in a corner. So we'll Literally. start up there and then work our way backwards and out. Okay. okay. One thing I didn't mention is that we're using porch paint. So this is intended for high traffic. Yeah. It's really gonna hold up. Kind of yeah. like that orange paint. <laughs> so there's a whole team of people that are like, you cannot paint hardwood floors. And I know that some of you out there right now are freaking out that I'm going to paint these floors. But honestly, they're not the best hardwood floors and it would take an entire weekend plus to strip them down, sand them, refinish them. And guys, this is the weekender. I need to finish five projects, not just one in a weekend. And I promise, even if you're thinking that I'm crazy for painting it, it's gonna turn out awesome in the end. Just you wait and see. We're rolling into Sunday with a fresh coat of white paint that will be the perfect backdrop for my minimalist design. And Bryce is out back cutting and staining some long pieces of lumber for a top secret project. He's got no idea what I plan to do with it, and that's just the way I like it. Okay. We are gonna kick off this morning with some home organization. All right. All right. So I needed this to kind of be a quick and easy project because we have a lot of other big ones going on. I need to wrap up. I picked up a closet kit and it's considered a no cut kit. So we don't have to deal with like metal snips and resizing things. It's completely adjustable in the closet. Basically it's like a track system. Everything is gonna run off of these little guys here, mm -hmm. okay? I think it should be quick and easy and really, really organized. And I knew we didn't need anything too fancy because you're one of your minimalists, so. Exactly. Simple. All right, now what we'll do, again, since this is a no-cut kit, is just overlap this. Okay, so these are the verticals now that literally just clip right on. The next piece are these little brackets. These are our shelf brackets. These literally go like this. The beauty about this is it's completely customizable. So as we go, I mean, we're gonna make this work for you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I feel like we figured out the organization. Love it. But let's see now, like, if this is actually gonna be practical. Let's throw in some hangers, some bins. So here's my thoughts. Your clothes, her clothes, and then over here, we have an area for longer things. Dresses, coats, things like that. I think it's gonna be a lot more functional. Voila, there we go. Not too shabby, right? Love it. All right, kicking it off today with another project. You ready? Yes. Okay. We're using a project panel. This is like my go-to at Lowe's when I need to do an easy build. Okay. And because of how hard we worked yesterday, <laughs> we needed an easy one, okay? All right. So this project, you and I are working on it together because it's actually kind of specifically for Bryce. Yeah. This is going to become his new standing desk. Awesome. Okay. okay. Yeah, right. he will be pumped about that. He mentioned yeah. that he really wanted one. This is going to be the world's easiest standing desk. Okay. <laughs> this is basically the desk. I like easy. <laughs> so we have this project panel. They come like pre-wrapped. Sometimes I have to like cut them down to size. This is actually exactly the size I want oh, for his desk. That works out well. <laughs> so you know where your bookshelf was? Yes. The antique bookshelf? Yes. Uh -huh. That is gonna become his new work nook right there. The only thing that we're gonna potentially do a little bit differently here is do a combination of two different stain colors. Oh, okay, cool. Okay? Never done that before. <laughs> a lot of, it's such an easy thing to do and there's a certain color I want to go with some other things that are in the room. Okay. So I just like to mix and match.
All right, so let's bring this in and we're gonna be working back here. Okay. So this is the new home office in this area. Awesome. All right, so come on in and you can kind of see. Okay. Here, hold one in and I'll yeah. hold the other. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things with the standing desk is the ergonomics. You want it to be just the right height. Right. Which is gonna be a little tricky now that I don't want Bryce to see it. Yeah. How tall are you? I'm about 5'2", and, and Bryce, Bryce is about six feet tall. Six feet. <laughs> Jason, how tall are you? Why? <laughs> just tell me, how tall are you? Are you sure? Can you just come in here for a second? I think that just was a little harder than I needed to be. Hello. Oh, hi. You look like a uh, nice six feet tall. Uh, I'm exactly six feet tall. Great. So is Bryce. With my lifts. With your lifts. Yeah. <laughs> so Bryce is six feet tall too, and okay. I need this desk to be perfectly ergonomic. So here's the way you figure out the height. What you want to do is when you are working, you want to hold your hands by your side, and then you're going to bring your hands at a 90 degree angle. 90 degree. Okay, they feel comfortable? Yeah. Okay, that should be right where the height of your yeah, keyboard right is. So, this is a funny exact size. Yeah. Not quite exact, but 43 inches is where we're gonna put it. Sounds good. To support the desktop, we'll start by adding a ledger board on the wall, making sure that we hit studs with our nails. Next, we're drilling two holes on opposite corners of the desktop. We're securing eye hooks into the holes. Then we're taking chain that we've cut to size and securing that onto each eye hook. After nailing the desktop to the ledger board, we're looping the chain onto hooks that we've attached to the wall. And there we have it, a fancy little standing desk. All right, so I said I was gonna add texture to this room and we have added a lot. We've addressed the walls and the floor, but I'm not done there. We are going up to the ceiling. I am going to add some kind of minimalist thin planks that are really just gonna bring this entire room together. I did have Bryce stain this wood, but I wouldn't tell him what it was for. So what I have here are 16 foot lengths of one by six pine. And I'm going to run these planks coming out of the cement accent wall. All right, so the wood is ready to go. Jason, how are we gonna put these up? We are going to add a little bit of liquid, liquid nails, nails. To, to the backs of them. Yep. And we have our finished gun. Yep. We're going to tack them into the joists. Yep. All right. It's super important if you're ever putting anything up on the ceiling to make sure that it is super secure. So that's why we are doubling up with the liquid nails and nails that are definitely going to be right into a joist. So it's kind of a low profile beam. It's not like a big, thick, chunky beam. And that really fits with the minimalist style that we're going for in here. All right, cool. So we have our first beam up and I pre-measured the ceiling and I know that I want them about seven and a half inches apart. So you know me and my cheater blocks, I cut a seven and a half inch cheater block so that we can just hold it up and put the next board up and we'll have equal spacing all the way around. Cool. All right. So you can see now that you get a little bit of ceiling, a little bit of wood, and I really like the spacing. I didn't want them too close together. It would be overwhelming. This is going to be the perfect accent. I think it's going to be awesome. that ceiling you're kidding me with the ceiling i'm so shaky <laughs> it looks like the room look is at the bigger wall. i can't even what do you think of that wall like man? i don't even have any words i feel like i'm in another country the texture of it like uh -huh. like some of it in some areas some of it and not in other areas like the fact that it wasn't straight lines was. and i didn't do anything to the wall after we finished really? so yeah it just took time to dry so you uh -huh. kind of had to trust the process trust it to do what i was hoping it was going to do Turned totally out awesome, right? Out. I, can't, oh I feel gosh. like I can't even take it. There's too much to take in. <laughs> <laughs> but they're so little. But it's so little, too. <laughs> it's like, oh, look at your desk. Hey. Oh, babe, look at that. Let's oh see. Is is it, yeah, we need to test We did an height. ergonomic test. Is it? Is it correct Should for I you? Try it out? Just walk up to it. Basically yes. perfect. Perfect, <laughs> Basically perfect. We talked about 
pulling yes. everything out of the room and layering in texture, and you uh -huh. can kind of hopefully see where we did that. We uh -huh. did the wall, the ceiling, the floors. The floors, that's what I'm like stuck on oh, right oh now. My gosh. Look at our floors. Oh my gosh, yeah. You were that's right amazing. about the floor. I was, I was skeptical. I'll be honest. Yeah. I was, <laughs> he even told me. That. I was like, I don't, I don't know how this is gonna work sure out. I really don't know. But <laughs> so you guys are chatting behind my back. Uh, it happened just about the floor. Yeah. I was like, let's just trust yeah. her. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did the closet <gasps> get to? <down>? Wait. <laughs> Actually, yes. I gave you some organization and style and loads of functionality. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> so really organized, tons of bins for your small scale accessories, uh -huh, his uh -huh. and her, your shoes, oh your laundry basket fits. It's like fits. exactly what we could have Everything fits. wanted. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Monica. You are oh my welcome. Gosh. I love it. I can't even believe this is our house. I wanted to find an easy, high impact way to add some sophistication to this space and really make it feel you wanted like to get away from the busy life. And in here, I feel like it feels like you're like on this amazing trip or you're at a hotel. That's so you exactly. can kind of just get away. That's what we need in our lives. So <laughs> <laughs> we well, need to get away every single night. <laughs> <laughs> well now you can. Guys, this might be my favorite Weekender transformation to date, but I want to know what you think. So leave me a comment below and let me know what you think of this entire master bedroom transformation. And as always, make sure you're subscribed to the Lowe's YouTube channel. You don't want to miss a single episode of The Weekender. This weekend, I am working on a master bathroom, which a bathroom in a weekend is no joke. It's a lot to do. But the good news is this bathroom is already headed in the right direction. The homeowners know where they want it to end up. They just need my help getting it there. You can open up your eyes and check out your new master bathroom. Oh my wow. gosh!